so this is lecture number four in our series and we are discussing Indian geography right and in Indian geography we started with monsoon right after that we did the forest resources and in the last class we did more broader topics like forest deforest uh, and the deforestation the conservation techniques etc okay, these were covered in the last topic the last class so this is the class number four and in this class we will start with the soils of india but before the soils of india we must understand some other aspects related to the soils right because for understanding the classification of soils we must understand different types of soils in the broader category right what are the soil forming processes what are the factors that affects the soil formation okay after that we will do these application based topics the desertification degradation the ravines the areas affecting the ravines in india so after that we will do these topics so we will first start with the the very first topic that is the soil forming processes soil forming processes and soil forming processes we will divide the soil forming processes in two types in two types the first is the accumulation and the second one is the moment of material right so accumulation accumulation of what accumulation of various material minerals in the soils in right and this accumulation is done by various agent like wind bring its its own kind of material okay it may be by the glaciers it may be by the rivers so the different agents of denudation accumulates different types of material in the soils right so this is the process of accumulation after accumulation has been done then starts with the differentiation differentiation through movement okay after accumulation of the material in the soil has been done then starts the differentiation and in the differentiation we will do the three broad categories or the three different regimes in the differentiation one is in the cool temperate zones the cool temperate regions second one is the wet tropics third one is the dry regions and fourth one is the saturated regions right so in all the four type of regions the differentiation technique will be different okay this leads to formation of different type of soil in all the four type of the regions okay in four four type of regimes right so then now see in the for example the dif before understanding this differentiation concept we must know in brief about the horizon of the soils this is topmost horizon is called as the o horizon the next horizon is the a horizon then there is b and last one is the c horizon okay what happens here happens the humification okay major material is deposited in, in this layer then the translocation of these minerals or the materials happen inside the soil okay and the layer in which the material is deposited is called the alluvial horizon alluvial horizon okay and this okay material is being deposited here like let us say 
now some the material is if deposited that means material is being transported from above to down now this transportation happens through two processes one is called the leaching process in leaching process what happens the material which is to be transported the material which is to be transported down will be dissolved okay so dissolved material will be transported dissolved material will be transported down right but in case of alluviation there will be the mechanical transportation of the material mechanical transportation of material down of material okay. to the below horizon right so these two are the methods of the transportation this is the horizon in which the material that is being transported will get deposited okay and we will consider let us say this c is the parent material right so these are the three horizon of and these horizons are more maturely developed in the zonal soils right so the zonal soils are the most mature soils in which all horizons are developed while in case of a zonal soils these horizons are not developed that means they are immature soils for example in the alluvial plains or in the the mountains okay. so mountain soils are a zonal soils similarly the flood plain soils flood plain soils are also the a zonal soils right because in the flood plains the soil is replenished after every year that means there is not enough time for the soil to get developed or differentiated in different horizons okay so the stable region is required for development of different or separate horizon in a soil so this is a brief concept of the profile of the soil how the profile of the soil look like for zonal soil and a zonal soil in a zonal soil if you ask me the profile we can simply dictate the right or draw the profile simply o profile and just draw in this manner because there is no development of separate horizon in case of a zonal soil but in zonal soil the perfect horizons are developed now what we were doing in the earlier one that the soil forming process okay accumulation and the moment of soil so first one is the temperate zones the cool temperate zones the method of differentiation in cool temperate zone is very different what happens in the cool temperate zone cool temperate zones are under the the taiga forest right they are under taiga forest and these forest secrete the chelating agents what the secret chelating agents okay and these agents gets bind binded with the cisque oxides let us say iron and aluminum oxides and these oxides get transported to the sub horizons leading to formation of the hard pan okay so the in the temperate zone this process happens so the topmost layer is the silica ridge topmost layer is the silica ridge 
okay and the hard pan is formed in the subsoil region hard pan forms in the subsoil region because of the transportation of the iron and the aluminium oxide so this is the manner in which the transportation and the differentiation in the cool temperate zones happen and this transportation and the differentiation leads to formation of the soils pedal for they are called the pedal for soils pedal for soils right then come the next that is the hot and humid tropics what happen in hot and humid tropics the process is entirely opposite to that of the the temperate region what happened in the temperate region the cisque oxide the iron and aluminium oxides they were getting transported in the subsoil region but in a hot and tropic region this will not happen in hot and tropic region the silica will be transported will be transported okay leading to this leads to desilication d silication right but for desilication to happen there are two conditions which are required there are two conditions which are these two condition number 1 is the the alternate wet and dry condition the climate must be alternate wet and dry the second condition is the highland region presence of highland region okay for example this kind of soils this kind of thing happen in the laterite soils in india laterite soils in india okay and this laterite soils as the two condition dictate the alternate wet and dry condition and the highland region so these laterite soils are found for example in the rajmahal hills okay in the western ghats okay in the chota nagpur plateau so this is the condition and the differentiation in the hot and humid tropics then comes the third part that is the sorry third one in the dry regions see in the dry regions what happens the alkaline alkalinization alkalinization in this alkalinization what happens this is the soil profile right this is the o horizon this is a horizon this is b horizon right and this is c horizon the evaporation of the water starts happening in this in these zones right evapotranspiration and because of evapotranspiration water gets evaporated and the salts remains accumulate get accumulated in these zones in these belts right this leads to the alkalinization in the soil and this alkalinization is mostly happening for example in the punjab haryana region punjab haryana region so what are the condition for alkalinization to happen so the conditions for alkalinization to happen condition for this process number 1 is the the dry subhumid dry subhumid zone right number 1 number 2 is the the presence of water close to surface 
close to surface c what happened in the punjab haryana region in the punjab haryana belt because of the green revolution and the subsidies irrigation subsidies which were provided leading to intense irrigation so intensive irrigation practices this intensive irrigation practice led to formation of ruhi kind of soils ruhi soils in, in in this region and these are nothing but the alkaline and these alkaline soils right so this is the this is the process that happens in the dry belt or the dry regions then is the fourth process of differentiation that happens in the the water saturated soils in the water saturated soils the water saturated soils in water saturated soils the process of an aerobic decomposition happens and this an aerobic decomposition leads to acidification okay acidification and in these water set these water saturated soils are also called the hydromorphic soils hydromorphic soils right for example these hydromorphic soils in india are found in the tri belt of india the rai region right the rai region okay and another fact of these water saturated soils is that in these soils ferric oxide will get reduced to will get reduced to ferrous oxide right this is another fact ferric oxide get reduced to the ferrous oxide and this leads to the blue gray the okay the blue greenish color of the soil okay so these are the some of the facts of the water saturated soils right so these were the processes the soil forming processes that we discussed soil forming processes all right now second topic that we will discuss is the soil uh, the factors that are affecting the soil formation factors that affect the soil formation right so the first factor this there were the five factors five factors that affect the soil formation and these five factors were given by the russian pedologist russian pedologist okay and these five factors are number 1 is the parent material okay parent material for example in the intrazonal soils in the intrazonal soils the parent material plays the dominant role in the soil formation right intrazonal soils like hydromorphic soils are intrazonal soils hydromorphic soils are intrazonal soils calcimorphic soils they are intrazonal soils right solanchak or the halomorphic soils they are intrazonal soils so in these soils the parent material plays important role the second factor is the climate right for example in case of the hot and humid in case of hot and humid regions 
we know the leaching would be the dominant factor or the dominant process leading to formation of the lateritic type of soils in cool and the temperate zones in cool and temperate zones we know the podzolization process podzolization process would be the dominant process and this podzolization process leads to formation of podzol soils right so this is the second factor that is the climate right the third factor is the biota in the biota both the animal as well as the plant plants as well as the animals affect the soil formation animals affect the soil formation in their own way the plants affect the soil formation in their own way for example the plants affect the humification both affect the humification process right for example the plant they intercede or intercept the rainfall right plants prevent the soil erosion prevent the erosion plant pave the way for the transpiration so they affect the soil formation in their own way animal affect the soil formation in their own way for example the grazing animals they affect the soil biota the earthworms they affect the soil in their own way right so the biota has its own effect on the soil formation number four fact number fourth one is the topography right so topography this topography has its own effect on the soil formation for example the soil on the steep slopes would be age zonal soils okay or the another example you can see the soils on the southern slopes soils on the southern slopes would be different from the soils on the northern slopes because of the rainfall pattern variation along both the slopes southern slopes we have the more rainfall along himalayas in the northern slope we have less, less rainfall so because of the difference in the rainfall the precipitation the soil formation or the soil kind of quality will be different in both sides then comes the fifth one the fifth factor as per this russian pedologist that is the time see the time required in the formation of the soil also varies from one soil to another soil for example in case of the let us say the uh, the soil which are forming on the basalt they will take more time right as compared to the soils which are formed on the let us say the sandstone okay one is the igneous rock another is the sedimentary rock so both the soils which form on both kind of the the parent material would be different will take different time so the time is also another passive factor which affect the soil formation right so what we have discussed the number one is we have discussed the processes which affect the soil formation processes of soil formation right the second thing that we see was the factors affecting the soil formation okay and on this understanding of these two facts okay on on the basis of understanding of these two things the processes and the factors now we divide the soil in three types number one is the zonal soils zonal soils number two is the intra zonal soils and number 3 is the a zonal soils right now we will study all the three different type of soils the zonal intra zonal and a zonal first of all is the zonal soils
the first is the zona soils the zona soils are divided in two categories number one is the is the pedalfers and number two is the pedocles pedalfers and the pedocles in the pedalfers precipitation is more than evapotranspiration right while in case of pedocles the evapotranspiration is greater than precipitation right so these are the two type of the zonal soils now let us further divide the pedal first where the precipitation is more than evapotranspiration the pedal for soils are divided in two types the two categories number one is the temperate in the temperate zone they are called the podzols podzol soils right and the second one is the laterite soils these podzol soils are further divided in three pores in in the four type of podzolic soils number one is the true podzols number one is the true podzol soils right number two is the gray podzol soils gray podzol soils number three is the red podzols the red podzol and the number four is the yellow podzols yellow podzol soils right the true podzol soils are found in the taiga belt of the forest taiga region right gray podzol soils are found in the laurasian region laurasian region of canada red podzol soils are found in the china type of climate right and the yellow podzol soils they are found in the mediterranean type of region mediterranean type of climate so this is the classification of the podzol soils and about the lateritic soils we have already talked that they are found in the hot and humid climate particularly in the hilly regions for example in the western ghats of india so these are the classification of the pedalfer soils first type of the zonal soil the second type of the zonal broad category of the zonal that is pedocles that is pedocles and the pedocles are further divided in three types number 1 is the chernogems chestnut and the cerogem soils right so these are the three category of the soils more appropriate it would be not cerogem because cerogem is the one class of in the desert soils chernogem chestnut and the desert soils and these desert soils are further classified in three types three type of desert soils number one is the red desert soils red desert soils number two is the brown desert soil and number three is the cerogem cerogem soils okay the red desert soils are found in the savanna sorry in the sahara desert
and the zero gem type of soils they are more broad category of soils it's a broad term for example they are found in the if you see the region they are found in the colorado desert of the colorado desert of usa okay so you can remember the pedocles they are chernogem chestnut and the zero gem see the the difference between these three category of soil is just of the precipitation for example if you see the level of the precipitation this is the decreasing level of precipitation right this is decreasing level of precipitation now if you divide this decreasing level of precipitation in the different soil belts the different soil regions the okay this is the decreasing precipitation so here you have the 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 chernogem soils chernogem soils this is the belt of chernogem okay further down side you have the chestnut soils chestnut further down you have the desert soil okay and on this side you have the grassland soils for example the prairie soils or the steppe soils so so this is the classification of or the difference between these pedocles as the precipitation level decreases so these were the classification of the zonal soils now we move to the intrazonal soils the second category that is the intrazonal soils in intrazonal soils the main influencer would be the parent material right main influencer would be the parent material now these intrazonal soils are further divided into the three types number 1 is the halomorphic soils right number 2 is the hydromorphic soils and number 3 is the calcimorphic soils now if you see the these soils halomorphic hydromorphic they form in all different type of climates different type of the parent material for example in the halomorphic soils there would be the excessive evaporation all we know the climate effect will be definitely be there but in the halomorphic soils they are further divided into the two types number 1 is the solon check solon check soils and second is the solonets soils right solon check and the solonet soils the hydromorphic soils which form in the water saturated conditions they are further divided into the three types like bog soils pt soils pt soils and the organic soils okay so this is their classification and the calcimorphic soils they are also divided in two categories number 1 is the terra rosa okay these terra rosa soils are found in the mediterranean region and rand genus so this is the classification of the intrazonal soils okay and the third category is the azonal soils azonal soils azonal soils form where in the mountain region in the glacial region or the glacial soils they are azonal soils in the flood plains so these are the age zonal soils okay so this was the formation or the different type of soils so we have discussed the three main 
things about the soil number one is the processes different type of processes we then saw the factors okay on the basis of process and the factors we broadly classified the soils classification of soils okay classification so this we have done okay the next is moving on to the indian soils on the basis of these things moving on to the indian soils so let us start discussing the indian soils so the first type of the soil that we will do is the alluvial soils it covers the largest area of geographical area of india right and is found in the great plains of plains of india right ganga yamuna plains plus coastal regions coastal regions more particularly the eastern coast plus kutch Okay, so this is the alluvial soil. This soil is divided in two regions. Number one is the Khadar region, alluvial soils, and the Bhangar region, alluvial soils. Bhangar region, alluvial soils. Okay, in Khadar region, this is the new alluvium. So this is the new region. This is the old region. In the Khadar region, there is the fine texture, alluvial soils. fine textured material will be deposited in this and here will be the coarse texture these alluvial soils are deficient in the nitrogen so they require lot of nitrogenous fertilizers ammonia right but they have the if you ask rich in the potass they are rich in potash so this is the alluvial soil the second category of the soil that is the black soil okay and the black soil is found in the maharashtra telangana parts of andhra pradesh parts of andhra pradesh karnatak mp tamil nadu and the black soil the main constituent material is the parent material that is the basalt they are formed because of the decomposition of the basalt underlying basalt but in tamil nadu the reason is different the decomposition of granite and gneiss rock okay and the black soils are used for the cotton cultivation cotton cultivation and these soils are again deficient in nitrogen phosphorus and potash right and the black soils cover some 16.6% of india's geographical area and these soils are also called as the inverted soils the soils which have the inverted profile because in the dry season these soils develop the large cracks these soils become something like that they develops large cracks and this large cracks leads to 
formation of the inverted topography in these soils black soil region so this is the second category the black soils moving on to the third one that is the red soils the color of these soils is red because of uniform spread of the ferrous oxide or iron oxides right and these soils are most spread again in <coughs> sorry these soils are found in the malwa region in the bundelkhand chatisgarh odisha telangana chatisgarh in odisha telangana Maharashtra okay so Andhra Pradesh so these are the region where the red soils are found okay these soils are again deficient in nitrogen phosphorus right deficient in potass cultivation is done with the intensive application of fertilizer okay intensive application of fertilizer is done right and if you ask the geographical area this soils cover the 11% of the india's geographical area right so they are not very suitable for the the what we call as the agriculture they are mainly used for the extraction of the construction material right so this is the third that is the red soil moving on to the next category that is the fourth the mountain soils mountain soils, mountain soils are found in the Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, plus other north states, most of the north states. Okay, they have the mount this mountain soils, and they are poorly developed soils, poorly developed soils not fit for cultivation of the crops okay and humus content is high in the soils and the mountain soils they constitute 8% of india's geographical area 8% of india's geographical area So this is the fourth category mountain slow the mountain soils moving on to the next category that is the fifth one is the desert soils these soils are found in the Murusthali region of Rajasthan region plus they have encroached upon the adjoining region like Marwad region Punjab Haryana Punjab and Haryana they are also found in the Kutch of Gujarat right these soils are rich in nitrogen and phosphorus
but the problem is the moisture moisture content in these soils limit the cultivation potential of these soils so this is the main problem we here so to tackle this problem in india we extended indira gandhi canal from the bias and the satluj conference so from punjab to jaisalmer this region to we took the water from the satluj and the bias conference zone and we took it to the up to the jaisalmer right but this indira gandhi canal has brought its own additional problem with it but this is the about the desert soils and the desert soil they constitute some 4.32% of india's geographical area right so this is the fifth category moving on to the next category that is the sixth one lateritic soils they are found in the hilly region like in raj mahal okay छोटा नागपुर प्लेटू इन दी ईस्टर्न घाट्स एंड द वेस्टर्न घाट्स राइट इन दी मेघालय प्लेटू Okay, more particularly the southern slopes. Okay, so these are the regions where the lateritic slow soils are found, and we have told the mechanism of their formation, the leaching of the silica. Okay, they are the hard pan soils, the hard pan soils. Okay, not fit for cultivation or like the doing of agriculture. mainly used for extraction of the building material right and these soils are again poor in the nitrogen and the phosphorus potass right so cultivation if anywhere is done on the lime the laterite soil is done with the application of intensive provisions intensive fertilizers are applied for example plantation cul uh, cultivation in Kerala is done on the lateritic soils with intensive use of the fertilizers. So this is the lateritic soil. Moving on to the next category, that is the peaty soils. Okay, I think we have done sixth. Moving on to the seventh one, that is the peaty soils. Okay, so peaty soils they are found in the water logged conditions they are also called hydromorphic soils and they form because of the process which is the glaification process of glaification okay and this process leads to acidification so these soils are acidic in nature they have high carbon content now why high carbon content because of the anaerobic decomposition the moisture remains in undecomposed state in these soils so high carbon content is found in these soils right so these soils are the storehouse for the atmospheric carbon this is the peaty soils moving on to the next category of soil number 8 that is the alkaline soils saline alkaline soils saline alkaline soils okay 
these oils are found in india mostly in punjab and haryana okay and these oils are forming because of the anthropogenic mismanagement or the mismanagement of the existing soils because of mismanagement okay what happened in this belt due to green revolution the excessive ground water extraction happened and because of that the this problem of alkalinization and the salinization happened in this belt okay because of the flood irrigation practices which were practiced flood irrigation practices these practices led to the excessive evapotranspiration evaporation and this evaporation of water led to accumulation of the calcium salts in the top soil and these calcium salts now have become the main problem and the main reason for this alkalinization so these are the saline alkaline soils which are found in this now we have done the classification of soils okay now we are moving to the next applied part that is the soil problems in india we have done the soils now we will do this soils problems in india soils of india are mainly going through three type of problems number 1 is the erosion number 2 is the alkalinization number 3 is the desertification so we will do all three problems one by one okay so let us start with the soil erosion first number 1 is the soil erosion see the factors of the soil erosion are many okay it is the primary denudation agents which are responsible for the soil erosion for example the water erosion is responsible for close to 90 million hectare of the erosion in india similarly the wind erosion is also responsible for close to some 20 million hectares of the land not 20 somewhere somewhere close to 10 to 11 million hectares of the land so the main reason for this is because see two third of india is this semi arid in the semi arid zone okay receiving rain for less than 75 cm and because of this the large portion of land are rendered susceptible to the erosion because of these denuding agents whether it is water or wind but there are more deep factors rather than these natural factors which are responsible for the soil erosion okay and these factors include the followings so the factors of soil erosion number 1 is the deforestation large scale deforestation is the one reason which render the soil susceptible to various kind of erosion for example slash sorry splash erosion gully erosion seed erosion so this all type of erosions 
happen when there are no trees on the land if there are tree on the land then they will effectively intercept the rain rain drop and prevent this type of erosion from happening okay the second main reason is the overgrazing see the grazing animals the hoofed mammals they destroy the soil biota right soil grasses okay and the trees all these are destroyed by the hoofed mammals the, because of overgrazing the soil is rendered susceptible to the erosion this is number 1 okay so deforestation overgrazing and the faulty the third one is the faulty agriculture practices whether it is the monoculture okay or it is the faulty cultivation on the slopes faulty terrace farming or it is the improper slope management improper slope management these all are the reasons for the soil erosion right so what can be the methods that we can take to prevent it so preventive methods to tackle the soil erosion you have to engage in the afforestation activity first of all afforestation activities okay. number 2 modify the cultivation practices modify the cultivation practices and bring it in consonance with the agro climatic zones agro climatic zones of country right this is the second factor okay the next is the to prevent the moisture or to control the moisture in the soil we can use the soil mulching okay covering of the field to protect the moisture right this is the soil mulching we cover the soil by the plant waste animal waste to prevent the moisture or retain or not retaining the moisture in the soil so this is the soil moisture Uh, soil mulching sorry so these are the methods that we can use to prevent the erosion so this was the soil erosion moving on to the next topic that is the soil desertification see reasons in the desertification are also almost same and similarly the prevention methods are also the same but there is a little difference see what is the desertification first of all is a process in which the agriculturally fertile land agriculturally fertile land is rendered infertile this is the desertification but the reasons are many for this particular thing to happen for example if you see the reasons of the desertification reasons the first reason is the over cultivation
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन पंजाब हरियाणा रीजन अदर रीजन इज द फॉलोइंग ऑफ द लैंड ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द मार्जिन ऑफ द डेजर्ट इन द मार्जिन ऑफ डेजर्ट इफ पीपल लाइ द लैंड वेकेंट फॉर इयर्स दिस लीड्स टू एनक्रोचमेंट ऑफ डेजर्ट ऑन दिस फेलो लैंड एंड लीडिंग टू डेजर्टिफिकेशन ओके this is the another reason okay then or cultivation again the faulty cultivation practices can also be mentioned here faulty cultivation practice for example in aral sea basin area aral sea basin area what happened the adjoining countries which are close to the sea okay bordering the sea they started using the aral sea water for the cultivation of the cotton crop right for the cultivation of cotton crops right and this using of the brackish water for the cultivation of the cotton crop led to desertification in that land so this type of faulty cultivation practices also led to what the desertification and then they the natural extension the natural expansion of deserts is the also another cause and main reason for this expansion is basically the global warming and the climate change and climate change right so these are the reasons for desertification now how to tackle this problem the question is now the prevention methods how to tackle it number 1 is the a forestation okay changing the changing the agriculture pattern changing the agriculture patterns okay then the second method that we can use is planting the shelter belts planting the shelter belts along the deserts to prevent their expansion in the non desert land and third one is the planting of grasses on the sand dunes okay so that the sand dunes they can be stabilized Okay, so their migration of the sand dunes in the non desert land can be prevented right so this is the these are the three methods through which we can prevent the desertification of non desert land okay so this was the applied part that is we did the erosion we did the desertification okay so the last topic of this class the last one of this class is the the ravines okay so we will study about the ravine different areas which are affected by this problem and what are ravines so we will study about the ravines in, in this last segment ravines so ravines are nothing but the result of gully erosion okay deep gullies are formed because of the erosion and this erosion is mainly because of the main factor of this gully erosion leading to ravine formation is the water okay 
because of the water and the rivers so this is the main reason now if you see this the goal is let me show you the see in the map if you see in, in map of india there are the four main regions which are affected by the goli number one is this punjab haryana region this mainly the punjab region this region mainly this region of the punjab then this region of the gujarat and this the chambal yamuna ravines the chambal ravines and this is the chota nagpur region chota nagpur region so these are the four regions which are affected by the problem of the ravines and let us see the individually each region first of all the the haryan the sorry punjab region punjab region the ravines in this region is called the choz c h o s choz and these ravines are formed because of the fast descending streams from himalayas and added to this probe added to this factor is the topography of this region okay so these factors fast descending streams and the topography of this region lead to formation of the ravines in the punjab which are called the choz right this is the first the first region that is the punjab region the second region is the is the gujarat region the region of the gujarat which is affected by the ravines is the region of the the region where or the north of north western ghats in this region again the fast descending streams led to formation of ravines along with this basaltic topography was denuded this also aided in the formation of the ravines the problem of ravines okay the third reason is the chambal region chambal region chambal region ravines were are found because of the tertiary and the quaternary nary tectonics this tectonics of the tertiary and quaternary period led to led to the upliftment in himalayas and this upliftment led to the formation of the or the what we call as the the second cycle of erosion and this second cycle of erosion led to formation of the ravines in the chambal region right and the fourth region is the chota nagpur region chota nagpur region chota nagpur belt the chota nagpur belt again the tertiary and the quaternary tectonics this tectonics led to the descending of the fast stream descending of fast moving streams and these streams led to the formation of gullies and the ravines in this region chota nagpur region so these are the four regions okay because of the event of the tectonics their topography and their rock structures 
led to formation of ravines which has today become a big problem and has been attempted by the government to recover these lands right for example the gwalior ravines were earlier attempted to be recovered similarly the chambar ravines are being today you no know, they are being tried to be recovered these ravines and there are different methods to recover these ravines so there are methods to recover methods to recover these ravines these ravine areas right for example cultivation of grasses on slopes okay cultivation of trees on top and valley okay third is the leveling of valley and top of the area right so these are the different methods which can be used to recover the ravines right so this was the last of this class okay wait a second so this was the last of this class that we have discussed up to the ravines and we have finished the soils and associated concept of the soils so in the next class we will start with the new topic okay and the new topic we will decide in the next class the most probably it would be the so we will start in the next class with the physiography of india that we left physiography of india so we will start with the physiography of india so this was the last of this class thank you and if you like the video subscribe the channel and we will meet in the next class with the physiography of india so thank you